Leonardo, uh, Raphael, Michelangelo, and Donatello. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking about these guys. How about more Mona Lisa than pizza? Um, this week, our Learn From Anywhere takes us to the artist of the Renaissance era. Welcome to Learn From Anywhere, um, this little LinkedIn series where we take nuggets of gold from around the world of history, sport, art, fashion, design, culture, society, anything, and see what we can learn to level up our employee experience. And this week, we're taking some nuggets from the artists of the Renaissance era. The Renaissance era, 1400s to the 1600s, was a golden era, not just for art and culture and sculpting and painting, uh, but for society in general. Um, and there's lots of things around this era we could start to unpack and unpick and learn from, whether that's Leonardo da Vinci, the man himself, um, who had a wonderful cross skill set of artistry and science and mathematics and philosophy, um, or whether that's moving into things like Shakespeare's era and taking all the amazing knowledge from that and learnings from that. This a fascinating era throughout history really paved the way for the, the modern world as we know it today. So what are we looking into from the Renaissance era? Well, I'm fascinated by the painters, not the Ninja Turtles, even though I do love the Ninja Turtles. Um, we're looking into how artists gain their skills. And really, I'm fascinated by the apprenticeship and the master relationship. We know apprenticeships today exist. They, they thrive in many regions of our workforce. Um, but back in the Renaissance era, that was how you learned. That was how you got the skill, how you became a master was through joining something called an apprentice guild. It was a, a relationship you'd start to build when you were 12 or 14 years old as, as a painter or, or anything really trying to apply your craft. And then you'd work between anywhere between one and eight years to sculpt, to make, getting feedback at every single junction, being coached intensely one-on-one -on -one to help hone and build your craft. The first around apprenticeships in the Renaissance era, there were local guilds that you would sign up to. Um, and when we take sort of some examples of some of the painters that I just mentioned there, they would have to hone their craft, work on that um, pretty intensely. And then what they do at the end of their apprenticeship, they would show their master work, which is where we get the word masterpiece from today. So very quickly, how do we take the nuggets out of that? Well, apprenticeship mindset is something that we could all adopt within our organizations. How do we set up networks within our four walls of our businesses to create better apprenticeship relationships? We're not just talking about going out and getting entry level employees to come and start their careers. People who have five, 10, 15, 20 years of tenure can start to retrain their brains to become apprentice-like. And anyone in your organization can be a master. And it's important to frame that. The CEO of your organization still has areas to grow. And if they feel they don't, then they have the lacking learning agility that's gonna be important to scale and grow your organization. Um, how do you create those and how do you find those internal masters? Well, start talking about different skills that you want to see grow, expand, and evolve throughout your organization. So whether that's storytelling, go out and search for great storytellers, and they might be within your organization for five minutes or five years, they could become a master and help improve the skills of other people throughout your organization. We've got to start thinking differently, beginner's mindsets, apprenticeship mindsets. We're not just talking about the nuts and bolts about using your levy to drive apprenticeships, even though that's a fantastic scheme, and if you're not using it, you need to. It's about bringing that mindset back into your organization to create better relationships, focusing on that idea of creating masterpieces, but getting feedback at every single turn from that one mentor or that one sponsor, right? Think like a Renaissance painter. Go and find your master. Become an apprentice. Learn, and who knows, you might just change the world.